What is going on, Comfy Gang? It's your boy, Comfy Neat. And today I wanted to talk about um, some realizations that I came to coming back from a family trip uh, this weekend. And um, I talked about it in the Discord. By the way, I'm gonna do like the Neat Ascension stuff probably next video, basically just showing myself practice um, MMA. But anyways, I wanted to switch it up. So um, yeah, I talked about it on the Discord this weekend, but basically um, in it, I sort of talked about how I, you know, I always feel like I made things off for my family and uh, that's besides the point. I think what I was getting at was that for the longest time, I've always felt that my family members have secretly hated me as a person um, because a lot of times they would they would say that, you know, they would, they would, you know, maybe invite me to something next time or that they'd, um, you know, call me or that they'd, you know, or even during like our gatherings, like they would act in ways like sometimes like even just for like maybe moments, just like avoid making eye contact with me or just not talk to me all of a sudden especially when I'm sober. Like this happens a lot more when I'm sober, when I'm under the influence, for some reason, things seem to click a little better. And that's something I'll get into later in the video. But um, yeah, anyways, they act in these ways, which sort of indicate that they don't like me as a person. And, but at the mean, in the meantime, they tell me that they care about me, that, they're happy to have me there. And um, yeah, so it, this has been a huge source of confusion for me for the longest time. And uh, for a long time, yeah, like I've been saying, I you know, thought that they hated me secretly, I guess. And that, you know, them telling, saying that they care for me was really all just a lip service. And that is possible, I guess, um, you know, normies saying that you know, saying things that they don't mean and, you know, pretending to be one way, but acting the other way. But, uh, I thought about it for a long time and, you know, I sort of came to this realization in the car ride home. And this was sort of sparked by the fact that, you know, one of my cousins, um, like, uh, yeah, this is not telling me that they, you know, they really care for me and that I'm always, they're always happy to have me there. And, you know, it just seems so genuine that maybe I'm just falling for, you know, normie bullshit, normie lies, normie pathological lying. But at the same time, it just felt so genuine. And maybe that's just my, na my naivety as a half spurg, I guess, or someone with a lot of social deficits, but um, because of this, um, I sort of thought that, you know, maybe it's possible that they do care for me, but they simultaneously can't stand being around me. And the reason they can't stand being around me is not necessarily because they hate me, but rather that, you know, they, I hate myself and that might seem like a pretty big stretch, but just bear with me. So um, even just the assumption that, you know, my family had hated me for the longest time is um, really um, not grounded in reality. Um, I mean, there's really no way, like obviously they've avoided inviting me out sometimes or they've fallen through on their promises. But, you know, there's a million other explanations for that. Like, for example, maybe I'm, you know, I'm just off-putting and they actually want to like me, but, and they keep giving me chances, but each time I'm given a chance, I seem to, you know, fall short and um, not, you know, live up to their standards or their expectations, or, you know, I guess act in a way which makes people comfortable. Or the other thing is that maybe because of the way I'm acting, because I, um, you know, I tend to, you know, 
act in a way which makes me appear very dependent on people. Like because I don't speak up, people automatically assume that I'm uh, that I'm stupid and that I need help. That I almost seem like babysitting and all these things, and or just me becoming really socially anxious. Um, yeah, uh, all these things um, I guess are very off. Yeah, off putting the normies and. Um, but also um, make me appear as someone very low value, but not just low value, but someone who takes value. And, you know, as I guess, you know, people say that, you know, family is family and that they should always prioritize each other, um, you know, above others. But I feel like in a lot of cases, that simply is, isn't true and you know i feel like you're still expected to act in a way where you're giving to people you're contributing value uh so that people contribute can contribute back to you and it's sort of like a mutually beneficial arrangement and you know that might make the normies seem almost selfish but um the fact of the matter is is that I feel like upon closer analysis, um, you know, I as a person have been, you know, essentially leeching off of my family. Like I'm not like asking them for money or anything, but you know, I'm always there and they've always tried their best to be accommodating to me, but because of my social anxiety and my social problems and, you know, my self-hatred, I automatically assume people hate me, which makes me shut down. And I also have social skills, uh, which um, I'm not working on fixing because I just automatically assume people hate me. And that um, further, um, you know, makes it difficult to interact with people and therefore makes it impossible for me to actually go out and talk to people and improve my social skills, which then makes it, uh, yeah, less likely that I'll, I'll I'll be able to, you know, contribute to, you know, things like conversations when people are just joking around, having fun, because that's all most normie conversations really are. Like, it's not meant to be anything serious. It's just meant to be, you know, contributing to the vibe, so to speak. And that's something you're not really able to do as someone with severe social deficits and social anxiety and because of that i'm always there i'm just because i'm just sitting there silently i'm automatically creating tension because you know it's like okay this guy's here why isn't he why isn't he saying anything does he not like us because you know that's the immediate assumption that people most likely make because even i myself make the same thing the same assumptions like for example if a relative is not talking to me i automatically assume that they don't like me so it's like kind of this ironic thing where i'm there and because i hate myself and assume people hate me i shut down and then which makes them think i hate them or that i'm weird or that well even maybe it's that i hate them or maybe it's that i'm weird i have ulterior motives but whatever the reason is, um, you know, I really do realize that the impetus isn't on them to accommodate my social anxiety and my awkwardness. Like the, imp- the impetus is on me to, um, to basically improve myself as a person so that I can, you know, I guess fit in and, you know, contribute to what they have going on because they're all pretty outgoing and you know i guess accomplished relative to me at least people and like none of them are like bums or anything or like terrible like they're all pretty good people and um you know i'm the opposite of that i'm a neat i i don't contribute anything to society let alone and i'm not saying that's important but it's like it's not just that like i don't contribute like you know to our, I guess, relationship, you know, like with my family members, I don't contribute to any of the relationships. 
I'm always just sucking value, sucking, you know, sucking energy away from people because they have to accommodate me. I don't, I'm not, I don't make people feel good when I'm around them. And, you know, you know, who, who honestly would like to be around someone like that? I don't like being around people like that. So why should, uh, why should they have to put up with me for being that way? And, um, you know, I guess coming to that realization made me feel a little bit better about myself that, you know, it wasn't entirely personal and, you know, maybe I'm just coping. Maybe it does mean that they hate me, but I don't really think it's hate. Like, it's not like I've done anything to deeply offend them. And if anything, I feel like they desperately want to like me. And I do have my moments where I am, you know, I guess there is that sort of family bond, maybe that's still there that I'll always have, you know, some priority over just a random person. It's like kin selection, I guess, if we're looking at evolutionary biology, like, um, and maybe that's what's causing it. But I feel like, yeah, they'll, they always keep giving me chances. They ask me what's new. And I feel like they're just waiting for me to act in a way where I'm, you know, someone that that they can rely on, someone who's not just taking value, someone who's, you know, contributing something, who's being funny at least, if not, you know, because I'm there, I'm I'm eating their food, I'm I'm doing all the shit, I'm I feel embarrassed, but they feel bad and they offer me a drink anyway. And it's like they don't have to do that, but they feel like they have to do it because, well, it kind of, it'd be kind of shitty on their part not to offer me a drink anyways. And it's like when I'm drunk. It's like all of a sudden everybody likes me and everybody's nice to me and everybody, um, everybody, you know, all of a sudden I talk, I'm, I'm opened up, you know, I guess mentally, I'm not so, I'm not so, I'm not so socially stifled and anxious and all of a sudden, you know, I'm everybody's best friend and people want to talk to me and at like, I don't get the same like weird coldness that I get from people around that I usually do while I'm sober. So if they truly hated me as an individual, then they wouldn't want to be around me even when I was drunk or whatever. But, you know, yeah, so I guess when I, and even when I am sober, I do have my moments where I'm actually positive or I actually say something funny. And I think they genuinely like that and they do sort of open up to me, but all it takes is like a little, awkwardness a little something you know whatever dumb thought that crosses my mind or something and then all of a sudden it puts me on tilt and then i shut down and all of a sudden they think that maybe they've done something wrong in fact it probably makes it worse because it's like all of a sudden i go from being outgoing to you know being shut down and silent and finding finding it difficult to say anything and maybe they think that they pissed me off and they're afraid to talk to me and then over time it becomes this thing where you know they're unsure of how I feel or they just don't like the fact that I make them comfortable because I always shut down. Maybe they think I'm always angry. And in reality, a lot of this is caused because of my own, you know, self-hatred. And, you know, I've tried to tie the whole theme of, you know, me hating myself, uh, you know, causing all this, which I, which is, I guess, sort of true because fundamentally my social anxiety is, you know, deeply rooted in my self-hatred um it's just the assumption that people don't like me is just the ultimate act of self-hatred because there's really no reason for this to be true even it, especially if it's just strangers and i do act really socially anxious uh, among strangers but in reality if i just assume that people like me and just you know talked naturally and you know unstifled and not so self-conscious then you know I'm, I'm sure the world would reflect that and that is why i guess i'm saying that you know it's not necessarily that my family members or even just people in general hate me it's that i probably jump to these conclusions uh in my own mind because of my own self-hatred which then makes them um you know makes me act in a way which makes them eventually not like me or not want to be around me. 
anyways, that was sort of a realization I came to while in the car ride back. And um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say for now. I don't know how long this video is, but I'm probably rambling at this point. Uh, so yeah, this is Comfy Neat uh, signing out. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. If you guys enjoyed this video, peace.